Good evening, one and all, and welcome to episode 251 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, coming to you live, as always, from YouTube. I hope you're all well, whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording. You're very welcome. Please feel free to leave a comment, ask a question. Please do consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so, and also spare a thought for supporting my work on coffee. And now that we have got all of that out of the way, first comment for this video goes to Tashara, who's saying hello. But Tina, Mr. Darkshines, and Leah were here as well before the broadcast actually started. I hope you're all well, and thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, the plan for today is that we're going to do uh, a sort of rare, longer, feature-length video covering a few different releases, but this isn't a top 10, this isn't a, a single brand or a single perfumer video. It, it's like the sort of the old days of Love at First Scent, where we used to just go through a few different releases, newish releases from different brands, and we are going to start with this one, brand new from uh, L'Artisan Parfumeur, and I've also got the latest from Arquiste, and we'll try and sneak in a few other things in there as well over the course of the next 45 minutes or so. Suddenly, lots of comments. Mr. Darkshine says, I have a bottle of Nila Vermeer Trahi and Bulgari Falcar arriving today, all thanks to me. Well, I hope you like them both. You have to come back and let us know what you think of them. Shabir is saying hello. The art traveler is saying, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> well, you're very welcome. Uh, Fahmi's here as well. Mystery Forms Beta, Cynthia. Well, in uh, in the spirit of, of the old days of Love at First Scent, I am going to say that I think we should start by smelling a perfume. But what I'm doing here is just making sure that everything is coming through on the tablet. Okay, so here we go. This is brand new for, from L'Artisan. It's called Mémoire de Rose. And as you can see from the packaging, as you may be able to make out from the packaging, it's been composed by uh, Christophe Reynaud, who has done a few things for the brand in recent years. You may remember that, what was it, a couple of years ago, maybe even as long ago as three years ago now? Um... They they did a sort of series of more Arabian type scents, which I I, I didn't actually get to try properly, um, but I don't think they made a, a tremendous impact. As far as I'm aware, he's a Givaudan perfumer. He certainly was a Givaudan perfumer. Whether he still is a Givaudan perfumer, I'm not sure. Woozy saying hi, Persilis. Did you do a first impression of Couleur Vanille? I'm going to say no. I'm pretty sure I didn't. I don't think I did. And actually, I'm glad you uh, you brought it up because as a massive a fan uh, as though I am of L'Artisan Parfumeur, it, it, it remains one of my favourite brands, um, widely considered to be the first truly independent, the true first truly niche brand at a time when, when that word niche actually meant something. Um, some of my favourite perfumes of all time are from L'Artisan, as several of them were featured in my book. But I do, I did wonder if maybe in the last couple of years or so, it it, it just sort of lost its way a little bit. And I and I, I can't remember the last time I was excited by a L'Artisan release, except maybe by Bana Banana, which came out, when was that, four years ago? Um, that was quirky and strange and odd and it worked and it somehow managed to be trashy and sophisticated at the same time but since then Couleur Vanille didn't really do it for me last year I think it was last year they released uh, fairly unusually for them they released a flanker of Passage d'Enfer Olivia Jacobetti's Passage d'Enfer beautiful beautiful incense frankincense um, scent and I, it was called Passage d'Enfer Extreme it was extreme, wasn't it, rather than intense? And it it sort of did what you'd expect it to do, but I'm not sure we particularly needed it. But this is th th this is a little bit more of a step in the right direction because I have smelt this before. I'm gonna I'm gonna spray it because otherwise I shall end up talking about it for ages. And I want to I want to do at least three other perfumes with you today. Um, certainly not excited by their new bottle design, says Shabir. Um, I'm guessing we're still talking about Latizon because I saw somebody mentioning uh, the different company. And that, that, that's an interesting kind of case study of what's happened with, with a company as well. Eric saying, I love Banana Banana. Uh, and Jonathan just got a bottle of Zeno in the Lancaster bottle, um, which of course is meant to be like Tom Ford's Beau de Jour. Hmm, well, we could have a discussion about that because I, I have a Lancaster Zeno as well. Okay, so Memoir de Rose, 
we have a press release from L'Artisan Parfumeur, brand new. Yeah, the, 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 this I think the, the, is, this is about the third time I've smelt it now. And it's 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 getting a thumbs up. Um, I was I was skeptical at first, and I and I know I shouldn't be overly skeptical, and I should try and maintain as open a mind as possible when trying new perfumes. And generally speaking, I do. But you know, I happen to be human as well, and 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 biases do get in the way because I thought, okay, that this is clearly setting itself up as as an all out rose scent, memory of roses, and you can't help but thinking, is there something new that can be said about Rose? Could What could they possibly say that's new or different or interesting about Rose if they're going to play the straightforward Rose Solifloor card? Um, but I smelt this and I thought, oh, well, there is something a little bit different and interesting going on here. And I think what it is, is that at the top, there's a very, very mouthwatering really very, very attractive, very Moorish combination of a, a pepper note, but also a really, really sweet citrus note, like a mandarin note. Um, somehow that combination of the savory and the sweet is what makes this particularly juicy and mouthwatering. It's a very, very juicy rose. And then you straight away get into um, the, the, the rosiness that you would expect. But here it's not especially dramatic or operatic. It, it veers much more towards the sort of fresh side of the of the rose spectrum. Um, it's it's not especially dusky. Um, it, it, it's a sort of daytime rose, but also maybe not particularly sticky, creamy, honeyed. Um, the emphasis does seem to be on, on wateriness and freshness. Um, rose is having a, a moment right now. I don't I don't quite know what's happened. I don't know whether it's a case of certain new rose materials that people are uh, suddenly wanting to exploit, but we've got, we had the new EDP of Diptyques or Rose, which I reviewed here a little while ago. We've got three new roses coming from Tom Ford. In fact, I believe they may already be available. I, I, I haven't smelt them, but but the, 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 the initial sort of comments on them seem to be quite positive so far. Um, there's this one, there are certainly a few more that I can't even remember at the moment, but there are lots coming. And I suppose we could even say that Garlin started the thing with Rose Chéri from their La Rala Mathieu collection uh, last year. When would that have been? Around about November or thereabouts as that came out. So Rose is, is having a moment. And I, I guess Rose is never not having a moment, but, but we don't often get this sort of crazy glut of Rose perfumes um, attacking us. I, I don't have a problem with that. Um, it, it is one of my favourite notes, and I am always interested in smelling new roses. Um, but I wonder if I wonder if the feel of the all of these new roses is going to be that they're going to be tr translucent and uh, luminous and much much more on the sort of fresher, youthful side, rather than trying to do something. Um, excessively dramatic. I mean, this is this is an outdoorsy rose. You know, this is a rose that you smell with the sunlight shining full on it, a kind of spring rose rather than a summer rose. Um, very, very, very convincingly innocent and gentle and delicate, which 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 is fine. It's it, you know, these are all good things. Let's get the press release. Let's see what I can tell you about what um the brand themselves are saying about it. It's not the longest press release in the world, so you needn't fear. Uh, where have I placed it? Okay, um, very, very pink packaging as well, as you can see. Right, never in the memory of a botanist, gardener, or perfumer has anything like this ever been smelt before. A rose? No, not one rose, the rose. A rose of a new dawn in all its purity, a fresh, blissful, ecstatic rose. Actually, that reminds me, Garlin have got another one coming, haven't they? Because they've got a new flanker to La Petite Robe Noire, which is called, the flanker is called Rose, Rose, Rose. Um, so there is something going on. The freshness of its complexion is no trickery. It was picked in the morning of the world. That is exactly how we imagine it. Graceful, easy, unpretentious. Actually, three words that I would completely go along with so far. In its collection, L'Artisan Parfumeur has created a new rose, one that has lost the memory of all the others to blossom without model or confinement 
in freedom in its singularity, a capricious rose refusing to be bound by the, re by the restrictions of its own existence. So maybe they mean a sort of back to basics rose, I suppose. A little bit about the perfumer. He says, the reason I love this flower so much is that it can tell any story. It is never the same. It always surprises me. It has no limits. A beauty without method, the press release goes on, as if freed from tradition, this young muse finds her truth by playfully blurring the lines. We expect her to be seductive, earthy and dark, and yet here we find her to be youthful, airy, crystalline, and then suddenly vaporous. Crystalline? See, that's to me heads into cold territory, so I wouldn't have said that, but youthful, airy, absolutely. Should she dare this flower? Um, it is because the perfumer invites her to. He only has eyes for this protean muse with an astonishing gift for transformation. The rose is numerous, abundant, changing. This is how the S in Memoir de Rose should be understood. Okay, so they're trying to make out the fact that it's important that it's plural. Um, and I suppose there isn't much else to read, really. This new story follows a rose and citrus hydride one that rose designers could only dream of. This fresh and joyful rose is dressed with mandarin, bergamot, and a veil of cotton musk. The virtuoso that he is, perfumer Christophe Henault, was keen to ensure it wouldn't be overdressed. He simply refreshed it with citrus fruits, as if to immortalize the freshness of a fleeting beauty maintaining its memory forever. Heads? Heads or hence? Oh, there's some dodgy translation thing going on here, isn't there? Memoir de Rose is an ode to the Queen of Flowers, the very incarnation of femininity. Oh, sorry, heads and tails. Okay, right, I see what they've done there. So heads, da 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 Tails, it is a joyful hymn to creativity, invention, and the art of play and counterplay. Three notes, mandarin, rose, musk. And then a little bit about, uh, about Jean Laporte. And that's kind of it. Very, very attractive rose illustrations to go with it. Can I show you that? Is that going to work if I bring it up? Oh, you get you get the reflection of the light there, don't you? But you get the idea. You can see it there. Um, <laughs> I've just seen your comment, Yura, saying that is a statement. The rose. Naema extra, hold my beer. <laughs> but but Naema's not trying to be. <laughs> That's just not why I miss doing these long, long form episodes, because you always make me laugh so much with them. Naema's not trying to be a solly floor, right? What have I missed? What have I missed? Uh, you're saying perhaps with all the oud rose craze in recent years and people having enough of oud, companies got rid of the oud and just left the rose. Well, interesting theory. Uh, drawn by Scent says, hello, just finished work. Yes, roses just got en mythique and like the rose lurking in there. David says rose is associated with being an antidepressant. Maybe that's why rose is being exploded and having its moment. Ah, interesting. Yeah, that, that's that's an interesting. Do, do do you think do you think the brands care that much about our levels of depression? Uh, Woozy says, have you tried anything from Essential Parfum? The rose in it is quite good, in my opinion. I'm pretty sure I've got their sample set, but I haven't gone through it yet. I need to check whether that is the one that I've got. Um, and David is also saying an ode to femininity as if Rose can't be king, to which I would counter as if a king can't be feminine. But yes, we we, we could have that discussion. Um, so this is just 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 charming. Um, very, very, very easy to like. OK, we should move on. For the remainder of what I would like to share with you today, I have not got full bottles, but obviously if, you, if you'd like to see what the full bottles look like, uh, do, you know, just just type them into a search engine, and I'm sure you will get the images that you need. I've I've got little vial samples that I've um that I've got myself. So and there's no point showing off the vials because you all know what vials look like. Next up, I'd like to talk about the latest from Arquiste. It's called Po. I'm sure I'm not getting that vowel sound quite right, as in the French word for skin. Um, but it's the singular, so it doesn't have the, the X on the end. And this is another creation from uh, the inimitable uh, Rodrigo Flores Rue, who did an interview with us a, a few months ago. Um, when uh, Carlos Huber started his Arquiste brand, um, the, 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 the perfume creation responsibilities seem to be divided kind of equally uh, between Rodrigo Flores Ru Ru and Jan Vanier. But I think the vast, 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 vast majority of the, the more recent creations were made by uh, Flores Ru. I have smelt this one as well, and I have worn it on skin, because uh, I tried to be fair to it and think, okay, well, it's called skin, 
so need to wear it on skin. But for today, for now, I'm going to um, spray it on the blotter. And uh, it's it's an interesting one. This a lot of you, a regular viewers will know, uh, regular readers certainly will know that I was a really really vocal champion of Arkeist when it launched. And um, I still say that their their debut scents um, were really really something else. So beautifully curated, uh, the 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 concepts genuinely uh, found. So or they found genuine olfactory expression in in the compositions in the sense you could you could see where each one came from, which where each one was coming from, and then. I guess I guess this is a sort of similar story with many brands. Um, commercial imperatives start making themselves felt, and you can't help. You know, if, if you're setting up a brand, you're not in the business of being a charity. You can't help but start thinking about what is going to sell, what isn't going to sell. Arkeist started doing uh, collaborations with 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 other brands. I, I'm pretty sure there was a collaboration with a hotel chain, at least one hotel chain. There was a collaboration with a clothing retailer, um, which is which is fine. You know, I'm, I'm not I'm not saying that as though it's a bad thing. But in terms of the style of the perfumes, to my nose, what seemed to happen is that they became simpler. They became easier to read, easier to grasp in 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 faster, you know, in an initial sort of smell, and and I think the same goes for Paul. Um, the last one, I'm pretty sure, the last one that they released was called uh, Misfit, which is based around a patchouli note. It did extremely well, as far as I know, and I'm it won an award, um, but I'm, I'm 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 you know I wasn't a huge fan, and Paul is. There you go. Cynthia is saying just trying to pour the ambroxan is very very prominent. It's it it it's a it's a blocky kind of composition in the same way that a lot of their recent ones are. Um, there, there there is an interesting bitter herb note at the beginning, but in keeping with with the the name, in keeping with the idea of the scent, it very 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 quickly um, becomes about the 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 base notes. And the base notes are ambers, synthetic ambers, woody ambers. You know, if you leave it on the blotter long enough, you you start getting into very definite woody amber territory. Not not a woody amber explosion. So this isn't like one of those ones that rips the insides of your nose out. Um, but I suppose to me, they're just not as fascinating as the original ones were. I sort of smell them and I think, okay, I get it. I don't particularly know what this would add to my collection if I if I were to if I were to incorporate it into my collection um as Andy says they've definitely become more palatable um woozy and anyway, woozy's talking to you are saying I don't hate amber oxan but most brands overdo uh, overdo it or like with with amber extreme however we should give the brand its due and tell you a little bit about the inspiration be 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 behind this scent because because it it, it is a great story. Um, so the, I'm I'm reading this from from their press material. Okay, the nape of the neck, the idealized scent of a lover and a lost embrace. Paul is based on the Roman Emperor Hadrian's memories of I'm not going to say this name properly, but is it Antinos or Antinos, his lost lover? You will be aware if you know anything about this brand that every single perfume is very, very firmly rooted in a specific and, and clearly delineated historical story or anecdote or event. So here we've got um, the Emperor Hadrian and his lover. The soft, salty and musky scent is an evocation of youth and life. From top heart and base notes, it includes in itself the promise of intimacy and the indescribable memory of skin. With main notes of ambergris, a clean musk accord, clary sage, white pepper from India, labdanum derivatives, and okume wood from Gabon. 
it goes on. So the place that we have got is AD 134, the Villa Adriana in Tivoli in Italy. Such was the love Emperor Hadrian had for his favorite Antinous that he commissioned thousands of sculptures to memorialize him after his demise. Like the contours of a statue, the physical and spiritual presence of the body is likewise defined by a fragrant silhouette. Here is the emperor recalling his lover, the touch and smell of him, the warm redolence of skin, the soft musk at the nape of the neck. Paying tribute to the beloved, like Hadrian did Antinous, this fragrance captures the memory of skin, conjuring intimacy and closeness, and living in our hearts and minds as an idealized scent. Um, which is which is genuinely touching as a story. I, I think it is that the way it's expressed there in writing is is great. Um, but the bit where I sort of disagree with the press material is this idea of softness um because okay like i said the 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 amber the amber ingredients haven't been dosed to the kind of level where they just literally knock you over the head and, and bludgeon you into submission but but they are materials that tend in to my nose tend towards roughness rather than softness and so this to me has maybe just got a little bit too much bite to it and a little bit too much edge to it to really qualify as a gentle, soft, intimate, caressing skin scent. But it, it's it's certainly worth trying. It's certainly worth trying. What are people saying? Um, have, has anyone tried this, by the way? We, I, mean, I know one person said they tried it. Um, uh, Jonathan is saying, I like Boutonnier uh, number seven. Absolutely. That was such a, such a great gardenia scent. My favorite from theirs, from them is still probably Anima Dulcis, but I like Alexander. Uh, I've got a lot of time for Nanban. Uh, they, they do have some good ones. And um, what was their citrus one, the original one? Was it Letrog? Really great citrus scent. Uh, what else? Uh, my fave was Fleur de Louis, says Woozy. Um, and Yura saying, Mal are the biggest exponents of Amber Extreme I have had experience with. Interesting. Um, and the description, oh, hang on. Um, Rachel saying, the description makes me think of Po by Arquiste. I don't know what you're talking about, but the perfume we're talking about is Po by from Arquiste. <laughs> okay. So that's that one. Um, Sticking with newish ones, uh, a, a little while ago, I talked about the Monte Carlo based brand Paris, Paris Monte Carlo, and I've got two samples from them. Let's try, let's try at least um, one of them, uh, the, the, the newer one. Um, this one, I don't know who the perfumer is. Um, it's credited to Gianluca Paris, who is the, um, the, the founder of the brand. And this is their vetiver. It's called Vetiver Java. By the way, if we don't get a chance to talk about it today, do spare some time to try their Mimosa, Mimosa Tanneron from Jean-Claude Elena. I think that was from 2019. Really, really beautiful Mimosa. The, 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 the sort of single note floral perfumes that Elena has done for that brand are so exceptionally beautiful. You know I'm a fan of the rose. You know I'm a fan of the jasmine. The Mimosa is, is pretty good stuff as well. The Vetiver... Um, is, is impressive. This one is not credited to Elena. So this is the, the Vetiver Java, okay? The Vetiver, oh gosh. <sighs> See, I was, I was going to be, I was going to be not exactly lukewarm about it, but I was going to say, well, you know, it's basically a Vetiver. So if you've smelt Vetiver, you know what this smells like. But this, at least in the opening, is a good Vetiver. It, it reminds me of, it reminds me of all the best sort of facets of encre, and encre noir from Lalique. But of course, the, the Lalique is pulled down with, with quite a lot of musk notes, whereas you don't seem to get that feel here. You really feel as though you are smelling vetiver pure and simple, but which, which I'm sure you're not. I think what's been upped here is the greenness. It is quite a green vetiver. And the, the the sort of mintiness i know that geranium is is cited as one of the notes and there's a kind of floral element of the vetiver that's brought out more um as you know i struggle with some vetivers but this is 
if if you want a straight up and down vetiver, or you sort of want to add one to your list of your favorite vetivers, you know, right up there with Yalan's vetiver and vetiver extraordinaire and and Ancre Noir and Chanel Sycamore, this immediately goes very, very, very high up the list because I think it, it it it's just composed of quality stuff. There's nothing about it, at least as I'm smelling it here, and I've smelt it once before. There's nothing about it that comes across in the least bit fake or or synthetic it's it's got that licorice quality that you'd expect the rooty quality that you'd expect the earthy quality but it's also got a very very sort of clean smoky bonfire note does it do anything different from other vetti versus woozy well if anything because as you know this this is this is a very very difficult field in which to present a point of difference, right? Especially as vetiver is so dominant and distinctive. If you're going to put a lot of vetiver into your composition, then the, the composition is just going to smell of vetiver. And it, but um, if it does do anything different, I suppose, is that it, it, it pushes things in a slightly greener direction and a slightly more acidically citrusy direction. And it's good. <laughs> I've got a a little bit of um, the, just the, the just the briefest blurb. Uh, this is from them as well. It says Vetiver sounds so French, but the name is deceptive. Vetiveru is actually the Tamil word for a plant whose long roots are also prized as a textile material. After extraction and distillation, they produce an amber-coloured essential oil. Its origins take us back to southern India, but we wanted our Paris Monte Carlo vetiver to be a truly special fragrance experience. After sampling the most commonly used varieties from the Antilles, Haiti and Bourbon, we travelled to ancient Java. The largest, most populous island in the Sunda archipelago still has something of its mysterious aura. Perhaps because the great active volcanoes are so close at hand, it is certainly true that Java vetiver does not share the clean simplicity of its closest relatives. By contrast, it is pungent, sharp, smoky, and almost burnt with unexpected green, floral, and spicy hints. Certainly green and floral comes across. Our vetiver fragrance is perfect for anyone searching for elegant... Try that again. Our Vetiver fragrance is perfect for anyone searching for elegantly charismatic notes, an intense woody heart that opens out into light floral notes. Um, yeah, I mean, to me, it is still, I think the floral aspect means that it is still one of the sort of cleaner expressions of Vetiver. It's not Almost burnt, maybe, but not smoky, if you see what I mean. You know how Timbuktu from L'Artisan Parfumeur does that does that smoky and yet never charred thing extremely well. This this has got that feel to it. And actually, now that I mention Timbuktu and now that I think of Timbuktu, it does remind me quite quite a bit of Timbuktu as well. It's a, it, the, absolutely you need to check it out, uh, especially if 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 you're a if you're a vetiver fan, well, well worth your time. Um, uh, Cynthia's saying, I want to try Lutin's Vetiver Oriental. Uh, yeah, what was it about that one? Because that's, am I right in thinking that that's kind of quite a, a sweet vetiver? Have I got that mixed up with something else? And Jessica's just tuning in saying, evening from India, happy to catch you live in velvet. Um, no, it's not velvet. It may look like it to you, but it's not velvet. Okay, and I would like to finish with something completely different. This is from another brand that I have mentioned uh, once or twice before that doesn't seem to uh, be very, very high on our on our radars. It's from the brand Marie Jeanne, which is based in Grasse. Again, regular viewers, readers will know that I rate their two colognes very, very highly. They have one cologne called Marcel and another cologne called Marcel, except one is the sort of masculine spelling of Marcel and one is the female, the feminine spelling of Marcel. Fantastic colognes, really, really, you know, beautiful uh, colognes. Speaking of vetiver, they also do a, a, a simple but effective vetiver sandalwood scent, which is called vetiver santal. They have made a fragrance mist called Brume d'été, which I suppose is what, summer mist or summer fog? And I haven't smelt this one. So with this, we will genuinely be finding out if this is going to be love at first scent or not. 
Um, it is just classed as an eau de cologne, so I'm guessing that it's going to be sort of quite fresh and bracing and bright and maybe not particularly long-lasting. But when those things are done well, they can be so stunningly beautiful, as you know. So this is Brume d'Ete from Marie-Jeanne. Let's see how this does. Right, give it a nice generous spritz on the blotter. Mmm. Oh my goodness, do you know what I've just suddenly been transported back to? I've been transported back to old, old, old versions of 4711 or 4711 or however, whichever way you say those numbers. I'm I'm still quite a fan of current 4711 and I love having some of their, um, you know, their hand wipes. But for some reason, this has made me think of how that fragrance smelt back in the sort of early 80s. Wow. I haven't, I'm, I'm back at Frankfurt Airport when we were transiting through Frankfurt Airport and we bought a tiny little set of small bottles of the 4711 cologne. And I haven't thought of that for donkey's years. Now, there's no question that 4711 has changed over the years because it would have had to, right? If they if they wanted to make the formula cheaper and they wanted to up it with musks, it's definitely muskier than it used to be, I think. Um, <laughs> you were saying, I wonder how many frag heads have, frag heads have 4711 as their pin. Well, not me, <laughs> I can tell you that now. And if you have got that as your pin, then change it now. But this is, gosh. So hang on, what are we smelling? We're definitely smelling lots of herbs, lavender, rosemary, tarragon, you know, those sorts of bitter herbs, but really beautiful citrus notes as well. What, what have I got on the actual thing? So lavender, mandarin, peppermint, petit grain, and rosemary. Yeah, and but this is what I love about this brand. They, they're they very, very, very unpretentious, <clears throat> simple without being simplistic, simple bottles, simple names, simple packaging, and yet the stuff that they put into their bottles is just so beautifully evocative. That interplay between the mint and the rosemary and the sweet citrus is so gorgeous here because you can just see, you can just see those those three elements being presented before. This is this will be a fantastic sort of pick-me-up spritz for the summer. Really well done. And it's got it's 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 just it's got just enough of that sort of tart bite that you want from from scents of this sort. And again, a little bit of info. Well, I thought I had a little bit of a blurb on this. Do I have the tiniest bit of blurb? It says a body mist with refreshing essential oils of mandarin, rosemary, and petit rain. Marie-Jeanne created a fer fairly novel format of a very gentle, pleasant mist, which lends a boost of citrus freshness to soothe and delight the senses and the mind. And it absolutely does it. Another fragrance mist, says Ella. Perfumery marketing departments across the globe are paddling fast. Well, the last one, of course, I guess what you're referring to is the Chanel one that we had. This, I have to say, certainly at first sniff, smells a lot more naturalistic than the than the Chanel one. Um, really lovely, actually, really lovely. If it isn't too expensive, this is the kind of thing in which I would think I would I would certainly be interested in splashing out on a on a full bottle because it's the kind of thing you want to have around in the summer um so let me just label this one we will um we will have a a blotter update for those of you who don't know what that means if you're just watching one of these videos for the first time we always always have to acknowledge that we mustn't judge perfumes or come to conclusions about them based just on a first sniff. I know that this video series is called Love at First Scent and what I am very often giving you are my first impressions, but that is why a few hours or maybe half a day after the broadcast of the video, I like to go back to the video description and give what we call the blotter update just to let you know how the scents have developed on the blotter over time. So I suppose we should just quickly do that for the ones, for the for the three earlier ones. How's the Lachtison doing? Yeah, it's it's becoming, I suppose, just gently more fruity and gently more watery. And it's now reminding me of the Aqua de Palma Rosa, Rosa Nobile, but still very, very clearly rose. The Arquiste, 
yeah, the Arquiste, like I said, just goes straight into those bass notes. Um, I think I think if the brand marketed carefully, this is the kind of thing that would probably have a lot of commercial appeal. And then finally, the Vetiver. Ooh, still pretty good stuff. This is the Vetiver Java from from Paris Monte Carlo. Okay, thank you very much for tuning into this slightly longer episode. Uh, do keep an eye out on uh, social media for details of um, episodes coming up. I will try to share as many new releases with you as possible as soon as they come in. But until next time, be good. Take care. Bye.